In early 2007, the unraveling of subprime and securitization set an economic firestorm raging throughout world markets. Banks, institutional investors, and private homeowners, nobody was left untouched. The first major victim in the UK was the Northern Rock Bank, and at the time, it seemed like an isolated case. Tonight at 10, Northern Rock appeals for calm and urges its customers not to panic. Crisis at Northern Rock. Customers queue outside some of the bank's branches, but the Chancellor says it's a sound business. The decision by Northern Rock to seek emergency funding from the Bank of England marked it as the first high-profile casualty of the crisis in the international money market, triggered by bad loans in the US housing sector. Way past normal closing time, on a Friday night, the Harrow branch of Northern Rock still open this evening, dealing with queues of people waiting to withdraw their money. When you've got your life savings invested, you want to be sure that they're safe, don't you? Well, if they're not in trouble, why are they having to borrow from the government? Banks lend money to one another in the interbank wholesale markets, but Northern Rock was more reliant than most on the funds provided by securitization and was therefore more exposed when things started to go wrong. Northern Rock is a classic case study in what can go wrong when you exaggerate the significance of financial innovation, when you exaggerate the extent to which financial instruments can shift risk away from the bank onto others. The bank was no longer offloading its risks, but was buying into more and more of them. You don't have a true transfer of risk. You actually have risk which is kind of beginning to feed itself. You know, it's kind of going around in a circle. We cannot control risk, no. It is a myth. It, Keynes called it one, one of those uh, pretty polite techniques that we um, use to lull um, our disquiet at the fact that we don't know what the future's going to bring. In the 12 months following the collapse of Northern Rock, things would get much worse. Lehman Brothers has filed for bankruptcy after billion pound losses, mostly in US mortgage farms. Oh, terrible death. It's like a massive earthquake. On Sunday, September the 14th, 2008, Dick Fould watched his company collapse. 5,000 staff at Lehman Brothers London office had no work to do except look for another job and get ready to move. Following the Lehman Brothers collapse, we had contagion throughout the whole system. Confidence dried up in banks. We got to a point where there was one evening when banks were no longer lent to each other overnight, and that is the final collapse of confidence. Systemic risk, the idea of all banks collapsing, was looking more and more possible by the day. If a clearing bank actually becomes insolvent, or there are serious worries about it becoming insolvent, um, then we have a problem which can have systemic ramifications because all banks are connected to each other, rather like all parts of a plumbing system are connected to each other. People stop accepting cheques or debit card payments or whatever it might be, and we all have to go back to using uh, cash and essentially the whole um, banking system can collapse because of the failure of one significant piece. What has happened in this recession, which is different from others, is that because of the crisis in the banking system, the banks are lending less, uh, or much more reluctant to lend, even to very good companies that have got good order books, good profit records, they, they're tightening up their conditions, they're taking less risk. Everybody out there who's worked for a living is wondering what the hell is going on, because we, we, we had a full order book and bang, it's gone. Orders stopped instantly. Within a week, we'd, we'd run out of work from having seven to eight weeks worth of work in, in front of us all year. And I made 85% of a workforce redundant. It's not very pleasant making someone redundant just before Christmas. The look on their faces doesn't make you feel too good. Everyday life has been affected now. When you try to go to the bank now and say, I'd like 25,000 as an overdraft. It's a definite no-no, unless you've got security. My house. And I'm not letting them have that. No way. The last thing I want to do is put my house up as a security and then lose it in a year's time, and then be homeless as well as jobless. That's the last thing I want to do.